This is Rabbi Shmuel Hertzfeld. You're watching the Rabbi Shmuel Show, and I'm here with Mona Charon, syndicated columnist in hundreds of newspapers every single day. Mona, what is your favorite synagogue? Oh, have shalom. All right, thank you, Mona. <laughs> now, Mona, you worked for Nancy Reagan, right? Yes, I did. And what was your job for her? I was her speechwriter during the campaign, 1984. That was the re-election, re-election campaign. Oh, mm-hmm. so that was great. You won by uh, you won by a lot, right? Uh, you know they haven't done as well in the Republican Party since I left. Right. So <laughs> I'm surprised they're not calling you up and asking you to write speeches. Forty nine states. Forty nine. Mona, that was your only campaign, right? That was my one and only. And how? No, you... actually, not my one and only. I worked for Jack Kemp too. Oh, uh, Jack Kemp. See, was he a, didn't do He was a good well. man. He, he was a great man. Yeah, we we should give a tribute to him. Uh, he, he was a lover of the Jewish people. He right? was very much so. And how did you get the job working for Nancy Reagan? Uh, it was because I had um, been at the National Review magazine, when, which was my first job out of college, and um, then I went to law school. And when I finished law school, I th- was able to get a job as a speechwriter because of my Buckley connection. Oh, so. They recommended me, and um, and so I was hired. So how long did you work for Nancy Reagan? Uh, I worked for her for about six months for the length of the campaign, and then um, she didn't need a full-time speechwriter anymore, so then I went and worked for President Reagan. And President Reagan, how long did you work for him? You were his speechwriter as well? No, I, I did other things for him. I wasn't actually in the speechwriting department. I was in the Office of Public Liaison and the Office of Public Affairs, and I was there for two and a half years. And for me, growing up, you know... Uh, when I was growing up, people could talk about Reagan. There's only one thing I really remember about Reagan. And I remember, I'll never forget, when Ronald Reagan visited Bitburg. Mm-hmm. And uh, as, you know, I, I don't know how old I was at the time. What year was that? I, I just remember. It was uh, 85. 85. So you were working for him at the time. Yes. And uh, you were invo- involved in public liaison. Mm-hmm. I mean, how can we, because uh, you have a lot of admiration for Ronald Reagan, right? Absolutely. How, how can you come to grips with the fact that he went to the graves of uh, Nazis. Look, placing it entirely in context, um, this was a case where it was a failure of staff work. He didn't realize until it was already too late, as he saw it, that the the plans had all been made, and and he felt that he would be insulting his host, the um, Chancellor of Germany, who was a good guy and a very anti-Nazi guy, let me add. Of course he was anti-Nazi. Um, and um, and so, you know, the president felt that he was locked in and he had no alternative, and he was very pained by the fact that Elie Wiesel came to the White House and scolded him, and it was very, very painful. Um, you know, it's been so many years that have gone by since then. All I can, and so I don't remember all the details. But all I can say is that Reagan, you know, he did he did have a very good heart, and he was a great friend of the Jewish people and of Israel, and, you know, this one mistake was, uh, in my opinion, not that. Uh, not representative of, at all of who he was. Yes, but it's amazing that people, you can do so much good and people remember the one thing you did. I mean, we we'll talk about the, the great things that Ronald Reagan did was when he met with Gorbachev, he said, we can't talk about anything until Sharansky goes free. I mean, this is something that Gorbachev himself later spoke about. Yep. And people spoke about, I mean, that's that's the reason why the Soviet Jews were able to leave the country and why so many you know, that's the reason why this video is being shown. Can I tell you? This video will not be shown were not for Ronald Reagan. You know why? Because he deregulated the... Uh, no, that's the, not oh, why. That? Because if he hadn't said that, then we would not have Sergey Brin, who founded Google. And doesn't Google own oh. YouTube? And <laughs> Sergey Brin's father was able to leave Soviet Union because of go. because of Ronald Reagan and because, uh, you know, people standing up to to Gorbachev. I don't know exactly Sergey Brin, but that's the reason. And look up, look Can I tell world. you a little story? I was in Israel. Hey, please, tell when, us, Lana. Uh, Not just to me. You mind sharing yes, with the world? Yes. I'm happy to share with the world. I was living in Israel in 1981 when um, the Israelis took out the uh, Iraqi nuclear reactor. Osirak. Osirak. And, Osirak. And, oh, whatever. Osirak, Osirak. And the New York Times condemned it at the time as an inexcusable act of aggression exactly. against Saddam Hussein. Inexcusable act of aggression. Yes. Meanwhile, fast forward how many lives were lost years later. Imagine at the time how many lives would have been lost had Israel not done that. Shame on you at the New York Times for whoever wrote that editorial should be doing repentance right now. And the U.S. State Department condemned Israel, and um, you know my friends in Israel at the time were sort of looking at me as the American and saying, you know, what, 
thanks a lot. You know, what are you, uh, what's your guy going to say? You love this Reagan. So we all sat around. We were, um, I remember sitting around a television screen and watching Reagan's press conference where he was asked about this. And I said, just wait, wait and see what Reagan says. And sure enough, he was asked about it. And he did one of his, you know, well, you know, Iraq has never made peace with Israel. You know, they weren't actually at peace. Uh, technically, they were still at war, so it really wasn't an unprovoked act. And so on. And he went into this whole justification for what Israel had done. So he protected Israel. He did, even though uh, that wasn't at that moment the line the State Department was taking. Very interesting. And Ronald Reagan, of course, uh, is beloved by many people. And I, it's just in my mind that Bitburg incident, which I couldn't get out of it, because when it comes to the Holocaust, we... We cannot have any room for, I think, equivocation. I, I want to just put you on the spot a little bit, Mona. Would that be okay? No. <laughs> Please. Okay, Mona. Yes. Who fine. are you endorsing for president uh, of the United States in the next election? Oh, that's an easy one. Okay, who is that going to be? <laughs> Mitch Daniels. Mitch Daniels. Tell the us governor a little bit. of Indiana. And why are you endorsing Mitch Daniels? Uh, he is a highly intelligent, very experienced uh, person. You know, lots of people are smart, but Mitch has demonstrated that he can get elected, that he can govern successfully, that he can get reelected, and govern running, as a conservative. Is he running for president? That's the part I'm not sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm not sure uh, if we can endorse anybody. You last know. time I spoke to him, he did admit that the door was open a crack. So. Well, uh, the next time he's in Washington, we invite Mitch Daniels on the Rabbi Shmuel show. You that you heard it here first. Mona Charon <laughs> has endorsed Mitch Daniels. Mitch Daniels for president of the United States, and the door is open. This will be this will be uh, a major story once people uh, see this YouTube. Uh, presentation. I think you're the first person to endorse him, right? Oh, yeah, and I'm going to, uh, that's going to have a huge impact. <laughs> All right, my friends. Mona Charon endorsing, endorsing Mitch Daniels. And you want to make a prediction? Do you think Barack Obama will get reelected? I don't want to make a prediction. Oh. It's too, it's, it, too many things can happen between now and then. So. Okay, la last question, Mona. This is uh, veering away from a Jewish topic. Would that be okay? We're talking about just one, we have only one minute left with you, Mona. I'm just going to ask you another question for a prediction. Um, the, do you think that the health care bill will be repealed by the Supreme Court? No. You think it will be here for, for good? I don't think the Supreme Court is going to undo it, but I think it's possible that the Congress will. Um, not in one fell swoop, but by cutting back and uh, amending aspects of it. So I, I don't think the existing bill will stay in its current form for any length of time. My friends, if you have more questions for Mona Charon, just come to shul on Shabbat morning, and you could ask her at the Kiddush. Is that okay? Yes, it is. <laughs> My friends, Mona Charon, one of the uh, most respected syndicated columnists in America. Barack Obama reads her every morning. He doesn't always agree, but he does read her every single morning. And uh, she's joined us here, and we're so grateful to you, Mona. Thank you. We go from strength to strength. Uh, keep up your work, and we'll see you in shul. Thank you, Reverend.